Hi, I'm Linda with It's a Crime, and are you sitting down for this? Because I just found out about the unsealed affidavit for Heidi Broussard, and you're not gonna like it. So, as a recap, Heidi Broussard went missing with her little baby Margot on December 12th, and just a week later, she was found dead in the trunk of a car. Thankfully, her little baby was found safe, and you can see more about those videos right here. So, back to the affidavit. There's a nine page affidavit that is unsealed and it was posted today by mainstream media. I gathered the info and brought it on here. So to start, Shane had mentioned in the affidavit that Heidi and Megan talked regularly on the phone. So we all know they were friends, they were best friends and they were friends for 20 years. It also said that Shane Carey was under the impression that Megan was pregnant the same time as Heidi. Shane even said he saw Megan holding her stomach or cupping her stomach as if she was holding her pregnant belly as a lot of you know as a lot of pregnant mummies do now when heidi's water broke which is on november 25th megan was actually alerted about her going into labor on november 26th megan drove from her home to austin to the hospital to be there with heidi as she gave birth a nurse at the hospital reportedly heard Megan saying that she was 37 weeks pregnant. And baby Margot was born, I believe it was just after 10 p.m. on November 26th. And as I mentioned in a previous video, Megan was actually on the right side of Heidi as she gave birth. Now, one thing that Shane Carey's father said was as soon as he got to hold baby Margot, Megan was in there and wanted to hold her first. So he thought that was pretty strange and he said her behavior was, you know, off. So in the affidavit, Shane said that he and Heidi gave Megan a key to their apartment on November 26th, which when I think about that, it was, you know, 10 p.m., the baby's born, she needs a place to stay. So here, here's my key, you're my best friend, no problem. So then Megan stayed at the apartment until November 27th. Allegedly, Megan told Shane that she's just gonna put the key on the counter when she leaves, but it was also noted that Shane nor Heidi was able to see that key at all. They didn't find it at all where she said she was gonna leave it. Then on December 8th or 9th, Shane said Megan told them that she had a baby and she had a baby girl, but there was no pictures of the baby. Now we go to December 12th, which is the actual day that Heidi and Margot went missing. According to the affidavit, a person who lives in the same apartment complex had video cameras outside their apartment and it had captured a vehicle that's consistent with Megan's car, which was a Nissan. And they said that the car was driving in the complex around 9 a.m. or I should say the video did. And one witness also at the complex said that she saw an adult white woman at the apartment complex carrying a little baby and walking towards a parked car. She also said that she saw a woman get out of the car and greet the woman with the baby. It also said that Megan was in the passenger seat, not in the driver's seat. So to me, that is a clue that there's probably somebody driving the car, right? The affidavit did not mention who was driving or a description. And it also said that baby Margot went into the back and so did Heidi. Now, something to note, Megan Fiera Muska denied being in Austin on December the 12th. So keep that in mind. Now on December 19th, which is the week later, the witness from the apartment was presented with a photo lineup and police say that the witness was 60 to 70% sure that that was Megan. Now to her phone. So a search warrant was requested for Megan's phone from T-Mobile. T-Mobile provided the data that included the historical location data and it did show the device was in Austin, near Heidi Broussard and Shane Carey's apartment on December 12th, the same day that she went missing. Weren't there, hey Megan? Now for the internet searches that the police found. It says, upon further investigation, officials found that Fiera Muska conducted suspicious internet searches. It also stated that official requested records from Google related to Megan's email address. And a review of search history also said that, that 
there was Google searches for reasons for Amber Alert, which was performed at 10.30 p.m. on that December 12th. Now, an Amber Alert was never issued because it didn't match the criteria of a missing persons report. That's what we were told. She also that day searched for Amber Alert issued Austin. And some form or many forms of Heidi Broussard was also searched 162 times during that time. Now here's something interesting. The news said on December 14th, she had searched for bodies found in Austin, Texas, which is super strange because yes, that is in that period of time, but why would she search for bodies found in Austin, Texas on December 14th? Like, did Heidi actually get killed somewhere else and then she brought her back to the back there? Like that's just really weird why it said December 14th, unless it was a typo. Could have been a typo. Stay tuned for that. Now also, Megan's Facebook account, it says in there that Ma Megan's Facebook account was deleted. So now authorities started conducting like surveillance around Megan's home and they had a helicopter up above and they had noted that there was a car that appears to be concealed or purposely, you know, hidden. Which if you check my other video, I show you that, you know, where the car is and the car actually has a garage to the left of the house, but where she hid it was right at the back, right near the door where you go in, in the back door. So now let's get on to the topic of Christopher Green which is the boyfriend or ex-boyfriend of Megan Fear Muska. Now, Shane had told officials that he knew that Megan and Christopher were in a relationship and that they lived together. On December 19th, FBI had observed that Christopher Green went into a Target store to go buy baby items. He was shopping for baby clothes and also for formula there. Then once he was leaving, authorities stopped him to talk to him and ask him a few questions. Christopher said, I was in a relationship since 2016 with Megan. We still live together, but we broke up in March of 2019, but they still live together. And then Christopher also said that Megan got pregnant in spring of 2019. He also said to investigators that he did notice that Megan was getting bigger and her stomach was getting bigger. And he also said that he did feel her stomach, which was, which he described as hard. Now, I don't think that would be hard to fake only because it depends on what month he felt her stomach and I could easily push out my stomach and make it hard, right? So he also said since they were broken up back in spring that he never really had a chance to see her undressed because he wasn't in a relationship with her. And I mean, if you're faking a pregnancy, you probably don't want to be undressed, right? Oh, I'm mad. Now, according to the affidavit, Christopher also said the day that she went to Austin on December 12th, she told Christopher that she was going to the beach with a cousin. Then the next day, Christopher did see Megan and she says to him, don't be mad, don't be mad. And Christopher said, why would, why would I be mad? Megan told Christopher, well, I went into labor and I delivered the baby without your knowledge. So then Texas Rangers showed Christopher a flyer of the missing persons. And Christopher looked at the flyer and said, that's the baby at my house. So Texas Rangers then spoke to Megan outside of her house. And Megan told the Rangers that she went to a birthing center to have her baby. But she also said that she could remember the name of the birthing center. And she said the only people present at the birth were the employees of that birthing center. So on that December 19th, the officials went and searched the home as we know. And then when investigators arrived, they noticed a horrible smell coming from the trunk. And we know that it was Heidi that was in that trunk. What we didn't know was that she was in a black duffel bag. So this case is actually playing out in Travis County right now, but it's possible another jurisdiction could pick that up if Heidi was in fact killed elsewhere. Super strange about the December 14th. So maybe that's when Heidi actually died, but it said Megan's search was Austin, Texas, 
on December 14th for the bodies found. So I don't know if she was actually killed somewhere and then she went back to go get her or what happened. This disgusts me as I'm sure it disgusts you. How many people right now are swearing? I know I am. Comment below and tell me your thoughts and your comments. And don't forget to subscribe because there's going to be more videos coming. I'm going to be also putting another one out on Peyton today or probably tomorrow. It's, uh, it's important on some of the things that I did find some more info. So make sure you subscribe and thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Oh, and if I do get to a thousand subscribers, I get to live stream on my mobile phone, which would be super handy because as it comes in, I'd be able to just flick on my phone and go, but I can't do that until I'm at a thousand subscribers. So please subscribe to help out. My computer cannot live stream. It does not work very well. I need a new computer. So mobile stream it is. So we'll get there once we hit that thousand. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.